To make money, you need money, right? Wrong, says my next guest. He started several successful businesses, cutting corners and costs along the way. In his book, The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur, he shares the startup secrets with today's bootstrappers. Let's get down to business with Mike Michalowicz. Mike, first I want to know what it means to be a toilet paper entrepreneur. <laughs> the toilet paper entrepreneur is the common entrepreneur and I liken it to the bathroom experience. Sometimes you're sitting there and there's those three sheets dangling and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But it's in that moment you become an entrepreneur, resourceful. And that's what a true entrepreneur is. It's going into a scenario where success is impossible based upon the expected standards, but you use resources that no one else would use and you come out leading. And so tell us who you are so that you can tell others how to be a successful entrepreneur. I thought a entrepreneur was whatever your vocation was. I was a computer guy. Just you do your vocation just bigger. And so I said, I'm going to be in computers and that's what I'm going to do. And it was a mistake. I was wrong. It's not, entrepreneurialism is not about executing a vocation. It's about monitoring and controlling other people executing that vocation. And now your new business, what's this called? Obsidian Launch? Is Obsidian that the name? Launch. Obsidian Launch, that's the name. And what is that? Well, give me the name first. What's Obsidian? What does that uh, mean? Obsidian is a volcanic stone in Hawaii. And the, the unique thing about it is when uh, Obsidian forms, it forms very fast from lava, from a volcanic explosion, and we grow businesses very quickly and very sharply. And that's what Obsidian does. We invest in startup entrepreneurs and make them bigger businesses in niche industries very quickly and very sharply. And when you invest, define invest. Time, energy, money? Yes, yes, no. Yes to time, yes to energy. What we do is we bring in um, the people, the infrastructure to help grow a business. So the marketing person, the attorney, uh, the legal specialist, an entrepreneur that's successfully grown a multi-million dollar business. Yeah, we got viewers right now, entrepreneurs who consider themselves entrepreneurs and they see you as a resource. Right. You're going to help get them the next rung up the ladder. Yes. But, and the one thing we won't do for the viewers is give them money. And this sounds totally backwards, but it's the right thing to do. Money amplifies habits. And if you, as an entrepreneur, have bad fiscal habits or no fiscal habits and you get money, you simply do your bad stuff faster and worse. I mean, the extreme is a, a, a drug addict. A drug addict gets money, they have bad habits, they use money to get more drugs. Yeah. And so how do you work differently? How does Obsidian Launch make it successful? So well, how do you make money on it? Right. So we, we take a uh, share in the business. So we are vested into success. How big a share? Uh, 25%. Well, that's a pretty big share. Yeah, big chunk. A but big you still chunk. give them control. We still give them control. Uh, we give them something that's unique too. They have the ability to terminate our relationship. Now there's an exit clause, but if they don't like what we're doing, they can fire us, which good luck firing a VC. So we discover what they're very talented at, what their natural birthright success factor is, and let them exploit the heck out of that. And we put everyone else in behind to support them. And how do all these individuals, these entrepreneurs in training, get to you? But one trick we use is when they apply, there's an application on our website, and I tell people this all the time, we reject everybody. Reject. I don't care who you, if you're Pat Croce, we're going to reject you. And then we want to see who comes back. Ah, oh, I like it. And we, I like it. And we still have, like, I tell people this on TV, 90% never come back. Like, what the freak? It's the perseverance factor. Yes. And that's one of the biggest components to success. But how about when the credit is tight as it is right now and they're going to need money? It's not coming from you. Yeah, yeah. And I, see, I believe you can start almost anything with no money. How? How? Because you have to find what your vocation and passion is. And if, if you want to start an airline, you can start with no money by first being an airline instructor. So you can start as a service provider and start building toward your ultimate destiny. The other thing in a down economy, best time to sell luxury items. So I'm not going to renovate my house, I'm not going to buy a new car, and I'm not going to go on vacation. But I'm sure as hell going to still experience luxuries by getting some more, you know, mocha latte cafe coffees at Starbucks or whatever. Here, I'll do micro investments in my experience of luxury. So if everyone's running into the next great craze, whatever it may be, go that way because that may be the next great craze. Complement what you love to do, what your passion, what your heart sings to do, and do it in a way, deliver it in a way that no one else is. You highlight bootstrapping. I want to yeah. know what ways you personally did it without raising money. All right, so, so here's my greatest tip. Legal fees and professional fees are very expensive, but they're absolutely necessary. So here's what I did. I had no money, but I needed roughly about $10,000 of professional services. I went to my local college in New Jersey, and I went to the legal department. I said, are there attorneys here? Well, absolutely. So I met with the attorneys and said, here's what I need. I need these legal documents prepared. 
would your class mind doing that? And in exchange, you always have to be giving. I will be a case study for your class. That's you, a great idea. You have to think out of the box. One, one student was so exemplary, so good, I hired him on the spot. So you're saying entrepreneurs don't have to spend the big bucks to make the big money? I'm saying you better not spend to make the big money. You better learn that discipline, that fiscal discipline at day one because you're going to have to have that for the life, life of the company. Read my blog, get your questions answered, and find out more about our guests on downthebusiness.com. See, now I screwed that up. That was awesome. No, man, that's good, good. <laughs>